The Equitable Life Insurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Transcribed and presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Now, for a moment, we're going to hear from a representative of our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. I wonder if other men get to kick out of their jobs that I do for mine as an Equitable Society representative. For instance... Every time I start an equitable education fund for some youngster, I say to myself, there's a kid who's going to get an education regardless of what happens. And that gives me a feeling of real satisfaction. In approximately 14 minutes, I'll be back with full information about the Equitable Education Fund, an important contribution to American education made by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, Larceny Will Out. On this, the official radio program of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, your FBI believes that you, the citizens of the nation, would like to know something about the progress being made in the constant 24 hours a day fight against crime. All that can be said without a full discussion of the subject is that some progress is being made. To be sure, it is being made slowly. But that is due more to the sheer weight of numbers than anything else. For example... The most recent study made by the Bureau of Census shows that there are now approximately 148 million people in this country. The total number of special agents of your FBI in all field offices and at headquarters is slightly under 4,000. A simple matter of division will show you that that means that there is one FBI special agent for every 37,000 people in the country. Recently, your FBI conducted a survey among its field offices to find out exactly how many files were under active investigation on a particular day. The total rose to more than 68,000. Or to put it another way, each special agent has an average of 17 cases with which he is actively concerned. Progress is being made in cutting down that number, too. But here again, such progress is necessarily slow. Because while special agents are clearing up files every day, major crimes are being committed much more quickly. To be specific, at the rate of three a minute. Tonight's file opens on the grounds of a rundown carnival as it opens for the evening. A middle-aged man edges toward the small crowd that is gathered on the midway. He passes the sideshows, the games of chance, and enters a tent that displays a huge sign. Madame Bettina, fortune teller. Hello, madam. Good evening. My name's Davis. I'm on the show. Oh, you're Farmer Davis, aren't you? Yes, that's right. I've heard of you. Oh, well, I'm sorry that I haven't been in to see you before this. I always try to welcome any new performers on the show. That's okay. And I... Also, must regret that the call I'm paying tonight isn't exactly social. What do you mean? Well, I've come here to you as a customer. I've got a problem, madam, a very serious one. Oh, well, sit down, farmer. Take that chair, right? Thank you. Now, oh, do you have any preference? Bourbon. I mean, do you want me to use the cards, crystal ball, or read your myth? Oh, well, I thought maybe we could just talk. Huh? Well, I'm afraid that my problem can't be solved by occult means. I see. Well, for talking, I'll have to charge you the same as the reading. That's all right. What is your problem? Well, up to three weeks ago, I had an Uncle Clem. He was a legitimate businessman. He died, left me $10,000. Dollars? Uh-huh. Cash? Yes. 
Your problem is you can't get it? Oh, no, no. I've already collected it. And you still got trouble? Yes. You see, since the inheritance, I just can't pick a pocket anymore. Oh. I got the money ten days ago, and I haven't gone into a single kick since. It's terrible. I come out on the midway every night, make a mark, walk up to him, measure where his wallet is, start to dip, and... And can't do it. I understand. Now, that's why I need your help, madam. Why, I haven't spent a week without lifting a wallet since I was nine years old. What am I going to do? How much did you say your uncle left you? Ten thousand dollars. Tell me, madam, can you help me? I think I can. Oh, wonderful. How? Let me contemplate about it overnight. I'll let you know tomorrow. You really believe you can get me back in action? Farmer, I'll get you back in action so good you'll be picking your own pocket. The next morning, at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor has just entered the office of the agent in charge. Send for me, sir. Oh, yes, Taylor. Have a chair. Thanks. I know you've been carrying an extra heavy load lately, but I'm going to have to give you one more assignment. Oh, that's all right, sir. Uh, this is a report we just got in from the local police. A man went to a brokerage office recently trying to dispose of some bonds. Mm-hmm, I see. When the broker he visited attempted to question him, he got up and ran out. Leaving the bonds? No, he took them with him. The broker reported it to the police. Did he get the serial numbers? Uh, just the one on the top bond. Well, we can check that, sir. And the police have already done that, Taylor. That's why they sent the case to us. Mm-hmm. The bonds were stolen across the state line. Oh, where? In Westville. A woman gave a lawn party at her home there about a month ago. It was for charity, and they had several games of chance operated by men from a traveling carnival that happened to be playing the town. And the bonds were stolen from her? Yes, they were taken from her desk. When did she first miss them? The day of the party. But you said, sir, the party was a month ago? Yes, she notified her local police, but we didn't get to the case until today, and there was some proof that the loot had been transported interstate. I'd think there was a good possibility that someone from the carnival took them. It's more than a possibility now, Taylor. Oh, why, sir? That same carnival was playing here the day the man tried to sell those bonds to the local broker. Do you know the name of the carnival, sir? Yes, it's in this report. I want you to find out where it's playing now. Step right up, folks, and get the biggest bargain on the midway. Only ten cents to play the Wheel of Fortune. A big Cupid dog goes to the winner every time we spin the wheel. Yo. Huh? Oh, hello, Betty. Come on down off of there. I want to talk to you. Okay. Something wrong? No, no, I got real good news. What? I got a customer for the bonds. Oh, look, Betty, let's forget about those bonds. Huh? Forget them? They're too hot. We can't pass them. Then why did you steal them in the first place? Well, it was an accident. I was casing that desk for a small score. I came up with those. You should always have such accidents. They're hard luck, Betty. We already had to leave one show on account of them. I'm going to take them someplace and burn them. You are going to give them to me. But, Betty... Where are they? In my trunk. Go get them. Right now? Yes. Well, I can't leave the stand. Five customers in the whole midway, so go. You're going to pass them tonight? No. Well, then why do you... I want to show them to a guy tomorrow. If I handle the deal right, he'll buy them for $10,000. Madam Bettina? Come in, Farmer. Oh, Thank you. Feel any better than you did last night? No, I feel worse. I just made a well-dressed man down to the fun house. He was with a young lady. Mm. Took out his wallet to buy some tickets. I got a peek at it. It was stuffed like the inside of a frankfurter. He paid for his tickets, put the wallet into his back pocket. Please believe me, madam, I could have taken it out with a spoon. And you didn't? I couldn't. I had no incentive. Well, I spent most of the night thinking about your problem, Farmer. And what was your solution? Someplace back in your family, there was a streak of honesty. Ah, now, madam, this is no joking matter. I'm not joking. The reason you're bothered by the money your uncle left you is that it was made in a legitimate business. Mm, yes, that's possible. 
But that isn't a solution. I have one. There's only one thing you can do. What's that? Buy something that's hot. That'll take the legitimate taint off the money. You really think that'll do it? I know it will. You see, if you buy something that's hot enough, you won't be able to sell it right away. That means you won't have any money, and you'll have to go back to work. Well, what do you think I ought to buy? I got just the thing for you. In the trunk? Mm Mm-hmm. Take a look at these. These bonds are so hot, I ought to keep them in an asbestos envelope. Are they yours? No. A friend of mine stole them about a month ago. Mm. Nice day's work. Mm. The face value of the bonds is $20,000. This friend of mine will unload them for ten. Now, if you buy them, which I strongly recommend that you do, you'll not only clean up your problem, but you'll get double your money when you make a sale. I see. That's my cure, Farmer. It interest you? Yes, I think it does. Then you'll buy the bonds? I believe I will. Good boy. Where's this dough your uncle left you? Uh, in a bank in town. The banks are open. Now why don't you go get it? We'll close the deal. Well, and I look, don't want look, there to. will be times after you've bought the bonds when you may doubt that this was the cure. Uh-huh, but when think... that happens, you just say to yourself, I will be a thief. I will be a thief. I will be a thief. That'll put you right back on the beam. May I come in, sir? Oh, yes, Taylor. I located that carnival we were looking for. Good. I've just contacted the boss of the show. What did he have to say? Well, the first thing I did was describe the man who tried to peddle the stolen bonds around here. Oh, did he know anyone with that description? Yes, sir. A man by the name of Joe Johnson. Is Johnson with the carnival? Well, he was. He used to operate a wheel of fortune, but he quit. Any idea where he might have gone? No, sir. The owner said that Johnson and a woman friend of his left the show at the same time. Uh, when did they quit? On the 12th of last month. 12th. Uh... Mm-hmm. That'll be the day after the robbery of the bonds. That's right, sir. Uh, Did you get anything on this woman who left with Johnson? Yes, sir. She worked with the show as a fortune teller. Did you get her name? Yes, sir. It's Betty Anderson. She operates as Madame Bettina. Uh, Check the files and see if we've got anything on either one of them. All right, sir. Uh, Could you get any lead at all on where they might have gone? Uh, No, sir. I didn't, but I've got a theory on that. What's that? Well, I think they left the show because they planned to sell the bonds and not work for a while. That's logical. Well, when Johnson was unable to dispose of them, they were back where they started, financially speaking. Uh So my guess is they've gone to work for some other tent show. That's certainly a possibility. Check every carnival tent show and circus and see if you can locate either one of them. You busy, Betty? No, oh, come on in. Just trying to put a little shine on this crystal ball. Mm. Hey, what about the bonds? Huh? What'd you do with the bonds? They're in my trunk. You told me you had a customer for them. I have. He should be along any minute now. He's going to buy them? For 10000 Where'd you dig that kind of a sucker? He was right here on the show. A guy named Farmer Davis. The pickpocket? Mm-hmm. Where'd he get 10 G's? An uncle died and left it to him. Oh. How'd you get him to go for it? Well, it's a long story. The point is he's coming here with 10000 in cash. Now, we split it down the middle, right? Sure. And we can kiss off this flea circus quick. Before he changes his mind, huh? He won't change his mind. Well, that's a pretty big bundle we're clipping him for. Joe, he ain't being clipped. They're worth 20000 If he's a smart operator, that's what he'll get for them. What time is it? A little after one. I better get the bonds out. He's due here now. You want me to get out of here? No, you can stick around. Hey. What? The bonds. What about them? They ain't here. What? I put them right in this drawer. Wait a minute. What's this? What? This note. It's from the farmer. What's it say? Dear Madam Vecina, I came here to your tent with the $10,000. You were out. While waiting, I felt a doubt come over me, just like you described that it would. So I quickly started to say over and over, I will be a thief, I will be a thief. It worked so good, madam, that I went right to your trunk and stole your bonds. Turn to tonight's exciting FBI file in just a moment. 
Soon, the 1949 college football season will get underway. In hundreds of bowls and stadiums, crowds will thrill to plays like this. Ryan's back in kick formation. He gets a bad pass from center. He's being rushed. The whole forward wall's in on him. He kicks, but it's blocked. A blocked kick. College men may have a few kicks blocked on the gridiron, but there's nothing blocking their progress towards successful careers. That's right. The more you learn, the more you earn. For instance, a college graduate is 15 times more likely to reach a salary of $10,000 a year or over than the non-college man. With odds like that in favor of college education, odds are 15 to 1, it's not surprising that the Equitable Life Assurance Society decided to create its widely used Equitable Education Fund. An Equitable Education Fund is just what its name indicates. A plan for far-sighted parents who want to make sure that their children get higher education. First and foremost... An equitable education fund is sure. Right. This fund combines planned regular saving with life insurance. So if the father dies or becomes permanently disabled, this plan makes it certain that his children will still be able to get the education he was ambitious for them to have. Second advantage. An equitable education fund is easy. You spread the cost of college over 12 or 15 years instead of taking a beating in four. It's surprising how small a monthly payment is required to build up a sum that is ample to see a boy or girl through college. Remember, higher education and higher salaries go hand in hand. So the more truly you love your children, the more determined you will be to give them a head start toward future success and happiness with an equitable education fund. Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file. Larceny will out. The law violated by the criminals in tonight's case, the law which, when passed by Congress, was named the National Stolen Property Act, is only one of more than 120 federal statutes over which the Federal Bureau of Investigation has jurisdiction. Remembering that, it will give you some further idea of the amount of work done by the special agents of your FBI when you learn that in the past 12 months, those special agents have apprehended a total of almost 7,200 fugitives. Most of those fugitives fitted into the same category as the ones in tonight's case. Unglamorized, unpublicized, and unimportant so far as the general crime picture is concerned. As you have seen, that fact did not deter the FBI field office from putting forth its every effort. For in the eyes of the special agents, there is no such thing as an unimportant criminal, nor is there any unimportant crime. Each file deserves and gets the closest possible attention, the fullest possible investigation, because the men who form your last line of defense have learned that there is only one way to fight the war on crime, and that is to wage total war. That phrase, total war, has a meaning beyond the dictionary meaning of the words themselves. It means that there will be no form of compromise with the forces of crime, that the war will be fought to a finish, To a point where the army of criminals in this nation has been driven to its knees. Has been driven to an unconditional surrender. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Taylor is just approaching the agent in charge. Are you busy, sir? Oh, no. Sit down, Taylor. Thank you. How did you make out of that carnival check? I just received an answer to the query I sent out. About that man and woman? That's right, sir. Have you located them? Yes, they joined a show called the Sunbeam Carnival three weeks ago. Have you checked to find out whether or not they're still with the show? No, sir. I didn't feel it wise to give them any kind of warning that we were searching for them. Hmm. Where's the carnival now? They're working on the outskirts of a small town called Terminal City. Oh, well, that's not too far from here. I know. The first thing to do is to call the local police at Terminal City. Ask them to check and see if the man and woman are still there. All right, sir. And uh, as I remember your vocation record, Taylor, you worked for a carnival one summer, didn't you? That's right, sir. Fine. As soon as you finish checking with the local police up there, you better go to the carnival and apply for a job. Well, Mr. Albright, don't you think we've got enough evidence now? Well, it's been my experience that you never have too much evidence. If those brokers don't make positive identification of Johnson as the man who tried to dispose of the stolen bonds, we'll need something else. No, I see. So get some kind of a job up there and see if you can get some concrete proof. 
Enough to convict Johnson. Betty? What is it? Don't you think you'd better slow down? Don't tell me how to drive. You'll get a ticket. If we do, I'll have it made out in your name. The whole thing is your fault anyway. My fault? Yes. Did I dig up the farmer as a customer? I'm going back before the farmer. If you had any moxie, you'd have sold the bonds yourself. Oh, don't bring that up again. You've been a dead weight in this deal since it started. Now, wait a minute. We wouldn't be going after the farmer now if it wasn't for me. Who went to his tent? Oh. Who searched it? Who found the newspaper with the story about a farmer's convention? Who noticed he had a mark around that story? All right, all right. What do you want? Membership in the Explorers Club? All I want is my 5000 If this car holds together, we'll both have our money tonight. <laughs> Albright speaking. Taylor, Mr. Albright. Oh, yes, Taylor. Where are you? Police headquarters in Terminal City. Have you been out to the carnival yet? Yes, sir. Johnson and the woman aren't there anymore. They've quit that carnival, too? That's right, sir. Any idea where they went? No, sir. I spoke to some of the other employees around the lot, and from what I gather, they pulled out of here in a hurry. Why? Well, I understand they lost the barns. How? They were stolen from them. By whom? A pickpocket nicknamed the farmer. They both left here trying to catch up to him. Any lead on where they went? No, but I learned how they left. Johnson rented a car this afternoon. I've had an alarm sent out on it. Fine. Uh, you want me to stay here in Terminal City, sir? No, oh, I don't see much point to it. Take the next train and come back to the office. There's only one train a day out here, Mr. Albright. That one's already left, but I think I can arrange for a lift. A lot of the local farmers drive in with truckloads of produce. All right. Report to me as soon as you get here. I come in, sir? Oh, yes, Taylor. Come ahead. I've uh, got some information for you. Oh, what is it, sir? Johnson and the woman are here in town. Oh, how do you know? That rented car was found abandoned here half an hour ago. Anything in the car that would help locate them? No. One of the agents went over it thoroughly. The only thing of interest was that the motor was still hot. Well, that could mean that pickpocket nicknamed the farmer is also here in town. It probably does. I've got his name for you. Oh, fine. I done got it from the nickname pile. It's uh, Willie Davis. Davis. Willie Davis. I don't think I know that name. No reason why you should. He's never been arrested in this part of the country. Uh, Have you got a a record on him, sir? Yes. uh, This uh, teleside came in with the whole story. He's been arrested 37 times starting 30 years ago. Always for picking pockets? Yes. Any particular pattern? Uh, Tent shows and conventions. He's Uh, been arrested half the time at one and half at the other. Conventions. Name is Farmer David. Mm-hmm. Sir, I've got an idea. May I go back to my desk and make a few phone calls? If I'm right, we could catch all three of them together. Betty, over here. Any sign of him? No. Well, let's split up and make the circuit again. Or can't we take a recess? My feet are killing me. They'll hurt worse if we don't find him. Oh, we don't even know if he's here. Maybe he's come and gone. There are 2,000 people in this armory. That many pockets is like smorgasbord for the farmer. Come on, let's make the circuit. Okay. Wait. What? Look. Where? Straight ahead. Yeah. It's him. Come on. No, oh, wait a minute. What for? Can't you see? He's in that guy's poke. Let him finish. Look how he clipped that wallet. Oh. He's going over to the corner to empty and dump it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good place to nail him. Come on. Okay. Hello, farmer. Well, I... Nice job you just did. Uh, coming from a fellow professional, I appreciate the compliment. 
you know why we're here, don't you? Oh, yes. Beautiful cattle, aren't they? Get up those bonds, Farmer. Bonds? I don't have any bonds. You left a note and said you took them? And I did. But I don't have them anymore. Where are they? I sold them. You passed them? Certainly. You hear that, stupid? They were too hot for you. He sells them the first day he gets his hands on them. Where'd you get rid of them? I sold them to a friend of mine who happens to be a fence. Okay, turn over the cash. Oh, I couldn't do that. Joe, I'll shield you. Show him what you're carrying in that pocket. Okay. Good heavens, that's a nasty-looking revolver. It'll go off right in your face if you don't kick in with that money. Now, let's have it. Mm, very well. Stand right where you are, all of you. Huh? Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Am I glad to see you. These people were just robbing Which me. Which only proves that there's no honor among thieves. What do you mean, sir? I mean you're all under arrest for bond theft. But I'm an... Suppose you tell your story down at headquarters. Joe Johnson, Betty Anderson, and Willie Davis were convicted for a violation of the National Stolen Property Act and each given a 10-year sentence in a federal penitentiary. Special Agent Taylor was able to locate the three criminals in tonight's case because he knew that the farmer who gave him a lift back from Terminal City was going to the city to attend a farmer's convention. He didn't know where in the city it was being held, though, but a call to one of the local newspapers gave him that information. The only question that remained was whether or not he would be in time to apprehend the trio, a question you have already seen answered. And so, through the superior investigative qualities of a special agent, plus the cooperation of local police in two communities, your FBI was able to close another file. Upon being questioned at headquarters, Willie Davis, the pickpocket, confessed that he had sold the stolen bonds and told the name of the fence who bought them. That enabled the local police to recover loot from many another previously unsolved robbery. Loot which, like the stolen bonds, was returned to the victims of those robberies. Which makes still another instance of the protection you receive from your FBI. Protection of your life, your liberty, and your personal property. a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, let's hear briefly from our Equitable Society representative on the subject of an equitable education fund. I'd like to make just one more point. It's never too early in a boy or girl's life to start an equitable education fund. In, in fact, the sooner you begin, the lower each individual payment will be. The man whose words you have just heard speaks for 6,000 Equitable Society representatives from coast to coast who are always ready to give you friendly help and counsel. If you do not know the name of the Equitable Man in your community, send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. An expose of a new and vicious criminal racket. Its subject, impersonation. Its title, The Chinatown Shakedown. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's program was transcribed, and the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Harley Bear, John Beale, Kathy Lewis, and Carlton Young. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. 
the Chinatown Shakedown on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.